In this video, we're going to talk about pressure. No, not that kind of pressure. We're going to talk about pressure, mostly gas pressure. Pressure is measured as force over area. The more force you exert, the more pressure you end up with. Um, so gas pressure, this is trying to show you gas pressure right here, a bunch of gas molecules bouncing all over each other. They collide with each other and they collide with the sides of the container. Okay, so the more collisions that you have, the more pressure you'll end up with. So gas particles and gas pressure is mostly all about collisions. Well, how do we measure atmospheric pressure? Well, first of all, atmospheric pressure is the pressure of all of the gases in the atmosphere. So basically, air. Okay. Usually, we will use something called a barometer. This is a picture of a very simple barometer. Okay. All it is is a dish with some mercury in it. Okay. And what happens is the air presses down on the mercury. Right. It exerts a force. Okay, so the air is exerting a force, and it's pushing the mercury up this tube. Okay, and up here we have a vacuum, which means we have nothing. Okay, it's not air, it's not oxygen, it's just plain nothing. So there's no pressure whatsoever pushing down. Okay, there's no pressure there at all. So if we can measure the height of this column of mercury, okay, the height of it, that will tell us what the atmospheric pressure is. On a nice um, day around sea level, the atmospheric pressure is right around 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so one of the units of pressure is millimeters of mercury. And that's because the atmosphere can support a column 760 millimeters high, or 76 centimeters, of mercury. Okay, so that's one of the units of pressure, and that's how we would measure atmospheric pressure. So, let's talk for a second about the units of pressure, because there's more than one. Okay, one atmosphere, okay, which we usually abbreviate ATM, is the same thing as 760 millimeters of mercury, or 760 tor. A millimeter of mercury and a tor are, are synonymous. Tor is uh, kind of the old school name, named after uh, Torricelli, who basically made the first barometer. Um, and then we've got also kilopascals. Uh, remember we said that pressure was force over area? A kilopascal is a newton, which is a measurement of force divided by meters squared. Okay, so this is this is a fairly common unit of pressure, kilopascals. But we're going to use all of these interchangeably and it doesn't really matter. So just to make sure we know how to convert between them, the pressure of a gas is measured as 49 torr. What's the pressure in ATM and in KPA? So we'll just take our 49 torr and do a little fun and exciting dimensional analysis. And one atmosphere is 760 torr. And that's an exact number, okay? Um, so that'll give us 0 0.064 ATM. Okay. And we can keep going if we want, and we'll convert ATM to kilopascals, which is 101.3, and that will give us 6.5 kilopascals. So easy to do, but you're going to have to convert between the different units of pressure quite a bit. How do we measure gas pressure? Okay, so let's say we have some gas in a tube, and we want to know its pressure. All right, let me get a better color here. So the gas is pushing on this column of mercury. Okay. It's trying to push it down and up the tube. And since there's a vacuum here, there's nothing pushing back. So let's say the height of this column right here is 100 millimeters of mercury. Well, what's supporting this column? It's being supported by the gas pressure. So whatever that gas is, we know the pressure of that gas is 100 millimeters of mercury. Okay, and this is what we call a closed manometer. Okay, a manometer is used for measuring gas pressure. And closed means it's closed up here and there's a vacuum, so there's nothing pushing against it. 
Measuring a closed manometer is very simple. The pressure of the gas just equals the height of the column. Okay? If we have an open manometer, so now we have the atmosphere pressing down, and we have the gas trying to push this up the tube. So it's kind of like a, a tug of war or a push of war, right? In this case, who's winning this? It looks like the atmosphere is winning, right? Um, if these were exactly even, then the pressure of the gas would equal the atmospheric pressure. But can you see that the atmosphere is winning by 30 millimeters? So let's say the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. Okay, nice sea level. Then the pressure of the gas equals the 760 minus the 30. So it's going to be 730 millimeters of mercury. So again, let's look at a couple open manometers. Okay, so there's an atmospheric pressure pushing down. In this case, so my gas is here, why don't we make it hydrogen for the heck of it? We'll make this one helium over here. The hydrogen is pushing down and the atmosphere is pushing down. And can you see in this case, the hydrogen is winning. This level is higher. So the hydrogen is not only pushing against the atmosphere, okay, it's supporting all of the atmosphere, which is 755, and it's also supporting a column that has a height of 24. Okay, so this is going to give us 779 millimeters of mercury. So the pressure of the hydrogen gas is, is that. Okay, now this one over here, we can see that the helium is losing, right? It's losing by this height right here. So in this case, the pressure of the helium is the 763, right, that they gave us here, minus the 35. Okay? So that's going to be 728 millimeters of mercury. So just to summarize, if you have a closed manometer, the pressure of the gas just equals the height of the column. Okay? If you have open manometers, it depends. In this case, you can see that the gas is kind of losing, right? So the pressure of the gas equals the pressure of the atmosphere minus the height. Okay, over here, the pressure of the gas is the pressure of the atmosphere plus the height. Okay, so those are, that's how we measure um, atmospheric pressure and how we measure gas pressure.